my YouTube friends, this is a video I never thought I would actually be doing. People have been asking me about Prism Live Studio for a while now, and my thought was, I don't want to do another video about another OBS wannabe that's just not up to snuff. I mean, that's my honest thought. Now, having tried it, I feel like a complete idiot. I couldn't have been more wrong about Prism Live Studio. It has nearly all the OBS features we've come to expect, and then there are the little things that Prism Live Studio does even better, and it just blew my mind. You guys are absolutely gonna love it, and it's a godsend for new live streamers. So you know what? Let's get to it! Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And if you're not subscribed while you're down there, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. So I'll bet you're wondering, what exactly made me try Prism Live Studio? Well, it's kind of funny that you should ask. Prism approached me and asked me if I wanted to do a sponsored video where I reviewed it honestly. I said, sure. I'll check it out. I mean, there's nothing like a bit of cash to change your mind, right? Now, once I tried it out, I decided I'm not gonna do a review of Prism Live Studio. Shh, just don't tell them that. You see, there's no point in a review of this amazing software. It's free for you to try out yourself anyways, so you don't have anything to lose. I thought it was so easy to use and had so many awesome features. The best thing to do was to show you guys how to use it to build an amazing live stream easy. I mean, that is what I'm good at, so I may as well play to my strengths, right? So today I'm gonna show you the basics first and then I'm gonna show you how to put together a really simple game stream that you can create all in Prism Live Studio totally free. And I'm just telling you now, guys, you are not going to believe all the cool, unique features that you get with Prism Live Studio. I was completely shocked. As always, there's a link in the description so you can download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. So without holding you up any longer, let's install Prism Studio. Here we are on the Prism Live Studio landing page. So what we're gonna do is just click on the download now button and it's going to download. You can see it in the lower left hand corner and you can just flip over to your downloads and double click it and that brings up this install page right here and we can look and see there are a bunch of different languages that we can install this in if we like we're just going to go ahead and click the install button and the install goes very quickly finishes up and you can just click start and it does a little bit more loading and installing and after a few moments we come up to this page and we are fully installed and ready to go and this is the first thing you're going to see after the install a bunch of different ways that you can log into prism live Studio. What I'm going to do is go ahead and select Google. It takes you here, you just log into your account and boom, you are finished. So this is the main Prism window. We have our channel over here on the top left. If we click these little three dots here, we can refresh or add channels. Yes, you can multi-stream directly from Prism Live Studio. So you can add another source and just select it over here on the right if you like. Up here we have the hamburger menu and it has a bunch of stuff in it. If we go down to settings, we can change our settings. We have the help menu, which has all kinds of information about Prism Studio, or if you wanna to go to the FAQ or the blog or contact them. Any kind of help information that you could possibly want about Prism, you can find right here in the help window. Below that, we have scene collection. For those familiar with OBS, it's basically the same. You can have a bunch of different scene collections, so you can do a lot of different live streams. Maybe you have a gaming stream, maybe you have an entertainment stream, and maybe you have other live streams that you do. You can save the scene collections for each one of those live streams completely separately. It's awesome. Below that we have edit source. We don't have any sources in here, so that's not populated. Below that we do have a view, and there are things that you can do like select the full screen interface and other things like show chat. Prism chat can do a lot of really neat things, including enable you to be able to chat 
directly with people on your network if you have a local producer. Next, we have the profile button, which is really a profile collection, just like you get in OBS. So you can save your settings individually for the different live streams that you do. So if you want to stream to different locations, you can have different profiles to stream to each location and save them right here. It's really cool stuff. Below that, we have tools. It has a deck link output. It automatically has the automatic scene switcher loaded right in here so that you can use that. It has an output timer and you can also add scripts. There is a virtual camera right here. And then we have the Prism Lab new items. And this is some cool stuff. If we click here, you can see that it has an application audio output, which is a plugin in OBS that is directly in here. All you have to do is enable it. It downloads something and sets it up so you can individually set up your audio sources. Very, very cool. It has a remote message feature, which is what I was talking about before, where you can set it up so that you can directly interact with people on your network who may be doing producing for your stream. And it has a cool beauty effect piece as well that you can enable that will allow you to modify the look that you get from your camera. I haven't really messed around with this stuff, but I do have to leave something for you guys to check out and play with when you download the software. So in the interface, you can grab any of these items and move it anywhere you want and dock it just the same as you can in OBS. Down here in the bottom left hand corner, if we click this little gear button, it will bring up our settings window. And down here we have all of the pertinent things for our stream. We have our CPU and GPU stats and our frame drop stats as well as our bitrate. And if we click this little arrow, it gives us a heck of a lot more information about our machine performance, the stream performance, and if you're recording, your recording performance as well. Really, really easy to see what is going on with the stats for your live stream. I love how this is shown. And it's so easy to get to. Now up here, we go to the top right, we can click on our little logo here. And that's going to once again bring up our settings. So let's go through our settings window. There really isn't too much on our general settings. You can enable or disable the watermark that puts the little prism logo on your stream. We can go to output and you're gonna notice a theme. A lot of this stuff is set up exactly like you would see it in OBS. So it isn't all that different visually. It's just so much easier to navigate and look through. I'm not gonna go through all the settings because they are so similar to OBS and there is a really really easy way in prism to just set it up to stream to whatever platform you want which i'll show you in a minute but if you do want me to do a video about the entire walkthrough for the setup on prism live studio leave me a comment down below and i will go through everything and explain what all of it does if we go back over here to the right we can turn off studio mode by clicking this button right here some people love studio mode i personally don't use it so i'm going to go ahead and turn it off the button right below that is our chat and this is for prism chat sources like i said if you're going to be talking to someone on your local network using prism chat that is what that's for i love the fact that we have a notice thing here as well so it will take notices that you might get on your stream like if you get a super chat or a donation or something like that that's the kind of stuff that can show up in notices here we can activate the prism camera and this is a really cool feature that works with cell phones and all kinds of other stuff that i'm not going to cover in this video because that actually deserves its own full video it's really really cool stuff below that we have our beauty effects which we mentioned before and then we have our virtual background stuff and this all works with the prism camera that we'll cover in a later video it has some really awesome features then we have the ability to draw on screen with this and we have the prism sidebar and a little sticker thing and a music ad piece and I'll cover all of those in a minute. And right below that, we do have this button right here, which allows us to connect our cell phones to the stream. And you can use your cell phones for a couple of different things. And this is something I'm also going to cover in another video because it is just such an absolutely incredible feature but you can connect via USB or Wi-Fi and it does some absolutely amazing things. Now this little exclamation point right down here is the answer to all new streamers prayers. Basically all you have to do is scroll down through this list 
find the platform that you want to stream to and click apply now and it will put all of the settings to optimize it to stream to that platform right in your settings so you don't have to do anything you don't have to go through the settings and play around with all of those things you can just click apply now and it will apply the optimal settings for whatever platform you want to stream to i mean it really doesn't get any easier than that right below that the little question mark will take us to all those cool prism help pieces that we talked about before and if you click the little gear in the lower right it will take us back into settings and that's pretty much everything you need to know about navigating through prism let's build a quick scene the first thing i'm going to do is mouse over the scene one name and click on the little pencil and rename this and i'm just going to call this camera then i'm going to go over into sources and click the plus and select webcam video capture device and i'll just call this camera and click ok and I'm going to go ahead and use the snap camera and I really don't need to change anything else. I'm gonna go down here and select use custom audio device and select the microphone I'm gonna be using and click OK. And there we go, now we've added our first camera to Prism Live Studio. Next I'm gonna click the plus under scenes and add another scene. And we'll just call this scene one for now. I'm gonna click the plus under sources and under the Prism features I'm gonna select Prism Chat and click OK and then OK. And there are a bunch of different styles that we can choose for our Prism Chat. And if we move this, they show up on screen. We can modify the font size however we want it. And when we're done, we just click OK. And we can just move this wherever we want on screen. And now our live stream chat is in our live stream. It's just that easy. Next, I'm gonna click the plus under sources and I'm gonna go to this background template here and click OK. And we'll call this background and click OK. And now there are a whole bunch of cool backgrounds that you can select that are all different sorts of animated videos and stuff like that. I'm gonna select this one with the moon. I think it's pretty cool and click OK. And I'll move that below our chat. So now we can see our chat over on the right. We can move our background around if we need to. And we can move our chat around if we need to as well. Next, I'll click the plus under sources and I'm gonna scroll down and select scene. And I'm just going to add my camera scene and click OK. And we'll shrink our camera down to the bottom left. Looks pretty good. Next, I wanna show you some of these cool features over here on the right. So if I click on this one here, I can draw on the screen. We have a bunch of options that appear below our preview window that we can select. So I can draw my own glowing box around my camera if I want. I can use this one here and draw an arrow. We can actually select shapes so I can draw a square around my box instead or a circle around this moon. All you have to do is click erase and then you can click on any one of those objects and remove it. It's really, really awesome. There are just so many cool things that you can do with this screen drawing piece. Right below that, if we select add sticker and we can select all, you can add a sticker to your screen, move it around, shrink it up any way you want, and you can add it and remove it once you put it in your scene by clicking the little eyeball next to it under sources. And if we go down here, you can add little memes to your scene. We'll just select this monkey. We can shrink it up or embiggen it, move it wherever we want, and you can add and remove this sticker in exactly the same way just by clicking the little eyeball. Right below that there's a music feature. You can go in here and add all the music that you could possibly want and it will play on the screen and even show titles and that sort of stuff if you like. Now we can add hotkeys to any of this by going down here and clicking our little gear, going to settings and then going to hotkeys. In this case we're going to add some hotkeys for our stickers so we'll use the up key for on and off or show and hide. And we'll use the down key for on and off and show and hide on the other one. And now when we click our hotkeys, we can show and hide our little stickers. It's pretty awesome stuff. I think what I'm going to do right now is take the time to show you guys how easy it is to build a stream in Prism Live Studio. So we're gonna build a full game stream right now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just modify this right here. So I'm gonna remove my camera and change the scene name to coming soon. And I'm gonna remove these stickers. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is click the plus and we're gonna add some background music. So I'm gonna go and select video and music and click okay. And I'm just gonna call this one music and I will browse to the location with the music that I wanna be playing over my coming soon scene. And I'm gonna loop it and that's all I need to do. So now we have some music playing in our coming soon screen and I'll just move that all the way to the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and click the plus and we're gonna select the clock widget and click okay. And we're just gonna call this countdown 
and click OK. And there are a bunch of different types of countdowns that we can select here. I'm going to select this one right here. And then I can go to detailed settings and I can select color. I can select how I want the clock to work, whether I want it to be current time, stream time, timer, or stopwatch. We'll select timer. We'll set our timer to 10 minutes. And there are just all kinds of awesome settings that you can do. You can change the colors. You can change the transparency on the background, all that stuff. We're just going to click OK and place this timer where we want it. Then we're going to click the plus and we're going to go and add a text template. We'll call the text starting soon text and click OK. Here's another amazing aspect of Prism Live Studio. They have all kinds kinds of epic titles and texts and everything that you could possibly ever want. We can scroll through here and check some of these out. They have social media, captions, elements. We're going to go with title and we're going to select this a movie title right here. And then we're going to scroll up to the top and we're going to change what it says to stream starting soon. Then we can go into detailed settings and we can select our font. We can change our text size. We can change the text box size, width, and height. We can adjust the alignment of our text, make it all capital letters or small letters. We can come down here and adjust the color of our text. We can change the opacity on that color. We can add a background to our text or an outline. And we'll change it to a little bit of a gray outline here. And you can adjust the speed on the motion of the clip and click OK. And then just place it wherever you want in your scene. And that looks incredible. And it took like 30 seconds to create. And I'm going to use the exact same process to create a Be Right Back scene and a Stream Has Ended scene. Once I show you once, it should be relatively simple for you to figure out. The next thing we're going to do is a chatting scene. So we're going to click the plus under scenes and we're going to call this chatting. Click OK. And now under sources, we're going to go ahead and click the plus. I'm going to scroll down to scene and click OK. And I'm just going to add that camera and click OK. And I'll shrink it up a little bit here. We'll place it over here. Then I'm going to click the plus and I'm just going to add the existing chat that we already created. Click OK. Move it over here. And I'm going to use the arrow keys to move it around a little bit and try to get these so they are parallel across the center of the screen here or a little above center. Now all the same keys work in this so if you hold the shift key you can stretch something. If you hold the alt key you can crop something. We're not going to be doing that for this but you can. We're going to click the plus and go to background templates and we're going to call this chat background and I'm going to scroll down here and I think we'll select this planet one. That's kind of cool. We'll move it all the way to the bottom so it's behind the scene. Then I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to go to background templates again and click OK. And we're going to call this chat accent and click OK. And I'm going to scroll down here and select this one here. And you can see that adds like a little snow across the screen. I'm going to leave it all the way in the front. Next, I'm going to go ahead and click the plus under sources and select text template. And we are going to name this one lower third and click OK. And I'm going to select captions and I'm going to select this lower third one. Then I'm going to go over here into our detailed settings and change my font and adjust the size a little bit. And we'll go ahead and add the text. Then I'm just going to adjust the width of the box a little bit and click OK. And I'm going to move this down here into the lower third area. And I'll just right click on it and go to properties. I'm going to adjust the speed down a little bit so it's not constantly moving. It moves a little bit slower. Then I'm going to click the plus and we're going to go into text templates again. And I'm just going to call this FB. We'll go into social and we're going to select the Facebook one here and click OK. And I'm going to right click on that and go to properties and I'm going to obviously change the text up. And I'm going to go into detailed settings and I'm going to change the font on the text and adjust the size up a little bit so it matches better with our lower third. And there we go, we'll just stick it right in there. And I'm gonna go in here and slow this one down a bit as well. And there we go. So I'm just gonna add another little accent to it. I'm gonna click the plus under source and I'm gonna go to color panel and click OK. And I'm just gonna call this background color and click OK. And I'm just gonna select the color that I want it to be. In this case, this light blue. Click OK and I drag it over here and then I'm just gonna stretch it out so it covers the top and the bottom. 
Then I'm going to use the shift key to stretch the sides and we'll drag it down below the camera. And then all I need to do is use the alt key so that I can just adjust that border a little bit. And this adds a really nice border around the outside of our camera. It looks pretty awesome. So that would be our just chatting screen all created. And that just took like, what, five minutes? And it looks amazing. The last scene we need to add is our game scene. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and add an audio improvement. So I'm gonna click the little hamburger menu and we're gonna go to Prism Lab and we're gonna add application audio capture by clicking on this disabled button to enable it and then click install. And what this is gonna let us do is add individual elements of audio individually. In this case, we wanna add our game audio separate from our desktop audio. Then we're gonna go over here into scenes and click the plus and we're going to to call this scene game and click OK. Then under sources, I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna add our camera. So I'm gonna go to scene and select my camera scene and click OK. And I'll just shrink it up down here into the bottom left hand corner. Then we are going to click the plus and I'm gonna go ahead and add a monitor capture full. And I'm just gonna call this game LA and click OK. And I'm gonna select the monitor that it's on and click OK and there we go, we can see it. Now we have our camera audio in there but we need to add our game audio. So I'm going to click the plus and go to application audio capture, click OK. And I'm gonna call this game audio and click OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the plus and select the executable for our game. In this case, it's Lost Ark. And then I'll click OK and then OK. And you can see that our game audio is now added into the mix. Now, one of the coolest things about Prism Studio is in the audio features. So if I click this little gear button, it brings up my advanced audio properties. And you can see our advanced audio properties look pretty much the same as they do in OBS. But the cool thing is right here in the UI, there is a slider bar next to each piece of audio. And let's say that people are complaining in the stream that they can't hear a certain thing and I don't have my monitor on to hear that item. Well, I can just come over here and click the slider bar and it changes it from monitor off to monitor and output so I can actually hear what the audience is hearing with that particular audio input. And this is awesome because it makes it really easy to troubleshoot audio issues or to hear what the audience is describing. What a great feature. So now when we go to switch scenes, we can notice one thing. We're not getting any transitions. Well, Prism Studio has that as well. So if we come over here and we click this button right in the scenes area, you can see we have a transition window and there are some basic ones, cut and fade. But if we click the plus, we can select Stinger or some other ones. I'm gonna select Stinger and we'll call this Stinger Wall and click OK. And then I'm gonna browse to my Stinger transition and select it. And then I have to change this from time to frames because this is a 60 frame transition. I know the 30th frame is where it will transition. Then I'm going to come down here and select 30. And then I can hit the preview transition just to see that A turns to B while the transition is happening. And it does. And we are all set. Now when I switch scenes, you can see we get that awesome transition. The only thing left is to go live. So what I like to do is go ahead up here to the top and click on YouTube. Go ahead and add it in so we are ready to live stream. And then the easy thing to do is go down here to our exclamation point, find YouTube, and select apply now now and it will automatically change our settings to the proper settings to stream to YouTube. You can click apply now and you are ready to go. Now what I like to do is go over into our actual YouTube and just set up a stream really quick that is scheduled so that I can show you how to start a scheduled stream in Prism Studio. So once your stream is scheduled, you just come back here to Prism Studio and you're gonna click here and it's gonna bring up YouTube. You can drop down the broadcast and select the broadcast that you have coming up and it should be exactly the same as the one you just set up. You click OK and now all you need to do is click go live over there on the right hand side and you'll be good to go. Prism Studio is such a breath of fresh air in the live streaming category. It is so simple to use and has so many really cool features. So what exactly is missing from Prism Studio? I don't think there's anything that would stop me from using it, put it that way. Everything is all there. And the other little things that Prism does well are almost too good to pass up. It's just really good. Now, if you want to see how to build the stinger I used in this video, you should check this video out right here.
Big thanks to Prism Live Studio for sponsoring this video. You can find links to them and all the other sponsors that support this channel in the description below under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly keep doing this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.